Hello, and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune, but with a twist. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, and Oakland native. I'm also a huge fan of history. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. This month, we have some very special episodes. Each week, one of my friends will be taking over the podcast to share their favorite deep cuts with you. This week's host is Ricky Montgomery, who you may recognize from songs like Mr. Loverman or Line Without a Hook. So Ricky, take it away. It's 365 with Ricky Montgomery. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365. Ricky Montgomery. Today in 1792, the U.S. dollar was introduced, but not quite in the form that we use it today. Let's reverse and talk about the first iteration of the dollar. The dollar was introduced via the Coinage Act, which not only created the dollar, but also made it the standard unit of exchange and money in the United States. The act said how coins were to be produced and designed. It also established the United States Mint as the branch of the U.S. Treasury that regulates and produces all physical money for the nation. The United States Mint was to be based in Philadelphia. The U.S. Mint had five positions, director, assayer, chief coiner, engraver, and a treasurer, which was a separate position from the United States Secretary of the Treasury. At first, the dollar wasn't the dollar bill we know today, but the silver dollar. When the dollar was established, it was pegged against the Spanish silver dollar, meaning that the dollar's value was based on the value of the already existing Spanish silver dollar. For a little context, let's talk about how money worked in the 13 colonies. Basically, there wasn't a uniform currency. Uh, This meant that people could be found exchanging silver or gold for items, but also random foreign currencies or things like tobacco leaves or shells or lots of land. Individual colonies sometimes had their own paper currency, but it was not transferable between the colonies. During the Revolutionary War, both Congress and individual states had the power to print money and issue debt to fund the fighting. But this plan backfired when the extra printed money resulted in lost money value and too much debt. The paper currency during the war was called continentals, and they were basically printed whenever anybody felt like it, which resulted in the glut of too much worthless money, more commonly known as inflation. The Coinage Act proposed to solve this problem by giving only the U.S. Mint the power to print money. It created the official dollar, but not just the dollar, also the eagle, more on that later, and the cent, and the multiples and divisions of each. Each coin's value was based on their weight, while the dollar was based on the face value as printed. The coins had to have a specific composition of metal and a specific weight in order to be legal and were made of copper, silver, or gold. The Coinage Act also fixed the exchange rate between gold and silver at one pound of gold equaling 15 pounds of silver. Eagles, half eagles, and quarter eagles were all made from gold. And since I know you've been wondering, here's what eagles were. They were $10. And half eagles were $5, and quarter eagles were $2.50. The original design for the coins was the word liberty, an image meaning liberty, so like a figure of a woman, the connection there is unclear. Uh, The year the coin was printed, an eagle, and the words United States of America. People could even bring their own silver to the mint and have it turned into coins, which, like, is insane to me. Um, Buying things was still complicated for a while, even after the establishment of the silver dollar. The coins were not as widely distributed as they should have been for immediate popular usage, so local banks had to make their own currency and then later exchange it for the gold and silver coins, resulting in a long and laborious process of the change to the official currency. The paper notes we know today weren't introduced until 1861. At the time, they were called demand notes. The first paper bills, aka demand notes, were the $5 bill, the $10 bill, and the $20 bill. Yes, the $1 bill wasn't even among the first printed. A nickname for the bills was greenbacks because they were colored green, you know, like today. And just like today, the green printing was used to prevent counterfeit printing of money. Chemists were behind the invention of green printing to prevent counterfeits. Uh, They needed to find an ink that was impossible to erase. 
Though it may seem like green has special significance, the truth is that green just happens to be the color of the first ink the chemists produced that seemed impossible to erase. As you can see, some of the aspects of our money stayed the same from this time period, and some are very different. For example, I've personally never heard someone call $10 an eagle before, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. For today's music, we have special guest Cal Shapiro, who you may recognize from the 2010s pop duo Time Flies or his solo project, Cal. Passing the mic to him to talk about this special day in his life. Hey guys, this is Cal. I want to thank Maya for having me on 4-2, April 2nd, today. Today's the day. Um, I've been counting down the days to today for a while. Uh, today I released my song in the water with my friend Quinn92. And what's crazy about this song is that I did the whole thing backwards. You know, I, I've released a lot of music in my career and it's always gone that, you know, artists, and we're very secretive. We make our music and then it's like 10 days, five days, and you put out the song and, and then everyone gets to ex experience it for the first time. But this one I decided to do backwards and I put out the chorus to fans and friends and there was a great reaction and Quinn hit me up and was like, I got to be on that song. And then I kind of made this song while showing it to everyone. And it was just an experience unlike any that I've had. Uh, but today, April 2nd, I think I'll look back on as one that changed a lot for me. Uh, but I hope you guys like it. Thanks for going back in time with me. And remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Come back tomorrow for more stories from the past. It's 365 with Ricky Montgomery. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365.